We're still rolling through all of the holiday gift guide ideas. I've gotten some great feedback from you guys saying you're loving all the inspiration and you're being able to add some things to the holiday wish list for your kids. Today's video is all about Play Monster. Play Monster has an incredible line of toys and I've asked them to send me some products to show you. They're also sponsoring a giveaway in this video and I'll have a lot of details about that. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. I hope you're not sick of me in all these giveaways yet because I'm not quite done. I just have a few more left. All through the month of November, I've been showing you these gift guides to get you inspired on what you might wanna put on your children's wish list or what you might wanna buy for someone special. Not only that, we're also giving away something in every single video, so it's not too late to go back, check out those old videos, and see what there is that you might want to enter to win. So after you watch this video, I'm gonna put a link down in the description box so you can go back and check out all of those past videos. I'm gonna be doing this up until the week of Thanksgiving, which is next week. Like really, it's next week. And so I just have a couple more gift guide videos left and I'm gonna announce the winners. Now you're gonna have 72 hours to respond so make sure you watch the end of the week of Thanksgiving. It's either gonna be Thanksgiving or it's gonna be the day after. I haven't decided yet. One of those days I'm gonna announce the winners and you need to watch to see if you've won. I also wanna mention that a lot of these products I've been putting in my Amazon affiliate store. That link's down below too. So if you wanna get inspired for some other ideas that you might want to purchase for your children, you can check that out, get inspired and get some great ideas. In this video, we're talking about toys from Play Monster. Play Monster is a company that has a lot of great products for different age ranges and different interests. So I have a variety for you today, some for the younger ones, some for the older ones, and the things between. So we're gonna get started, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is this game. You might know it from Yeti Spaghetti because Yeti Spaghetti is a great fine motor game, by the way, but we're not talking about Yeti Spaghetti. We're talking about Yeti Forgetti. This is Yeti for Yeti. It's recommended for ages four and up, and it is a hide and peek memory game. So you can have about two to four players on this one. You're gonna get four igloos, they're really cute, and three Yetis, one snow crab, and 32 cards. Your object is to collect the most cards by remembering where the Yetis are hiding while avoiding the snow crab. So what you gotta do is just take the cards, shuffle them, put them face down, and then set three of the Yetis and snow crabs out in the middle of the playing area. And you do that so everyone can see it. Then you have to try and remember where they are. So you're gonna place the igloos on top of each one. And then now what we're gonna do is try to remember where they are. Sounds easy, right? But when you're getting as old as I am, <laughs> it might not be that easy. Each person takes a turn and switching them around to however they wanna be. Do you remember which one's which? <laughs> I already forgot. So then we take a card from the pile and there are four types of cards. There is a swap igloos card. So this means the player who drew it must swap out two of the igloos without lifting them up. So this is where your memory skills are gonna be tested because the igloos are moving. So I could swap this one and this one. Then we have the peak card. So if you draw this peak card, you get to look in any one of these igloos to see what's underneath it. So underneath on top of each one of these igloos, there's a hole. You just peek on in there and you only get the sneak peek of which one's under there. This one is a reveal card. So if you choose this one, you can choose one igloo to lift up so everybody can see what's underneath. Which one should I pick you guys? How about this one? And we don't want to get the snow crab because that would be kind of bad. So hopefully it's not. It's the red one. All right. Then we have the Yeti card. The Yeti card means a player must try and remember where this color Yeti is. So this card has a yellow. So I have to pick up one igloo where I think the yellow one is and I get to keep this card. If I guess incorrectly, I don't get to keep the card and then I wanna avoid that snow crab again. So I know this one's red. Let's try this one. Nope, it's green. I don't get to keep the card. If you get the snow crab, you have to give up the cards they have and put them into this discard pile. So the first person to get three of these cards into their pile wins. This game is so simple, but so fun. And I like how you can mix it up and you don't know snow crab is over here at the end. Who's gonna win? And then you have some luck here with this. A lot of strategy going, memory skills. Memory skills are super important for this age. And then also strategy in, in figuring out which one is under which. For 12 months and up, this one, this one, you guys, is adorable. My Story Maker. This is the My Story Maker. 
It's by Marari. I think I'm saying that right. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But it is for ages 12 and up. I'm gonna open it up and show you. First of all, it's super, super beautiful. I'm gonna put it up here against my hand so you know exactly kind of how big it is. You do get a little instruction guide too that walks you through how to make a story. This one really encourages your kids to make your own stories because it's gonna play it back. So turn on, you just push this little red button down here at the bottom, it's gonna pop right on. There. <laughs> There it goes. And then it's not very loud right now because I don't have the microphone pointed to it. I'll turn the microphone around in just a second. Up here, this first section up here, these first six buttons, these are your hero buttons. So the top two rows will light up to tell the child that they need to push one of these to decide what they want for their character. So once I push this, you're gonna hear that part of the story. I'm gonna choose the cat. An orange kitty from the Catskill Mountains. Then we have the next set light up and then you can choose one of these buttons for the next part of your story. So these are the adventures. So we have an airplane, there's a train, there's an, uh, was that an air, airplane? No, that's a, like a, it looks like a blimp almost. So we pick one of those. Let's do sailboat. Sail the seas with these bongo drums. And then we have our last row here, which is the very bottom row. And this is our ending. So I'm going to choose the moon, earth. Let's choose this one. And went all the way home. The end. Here is the story you made. An orange kitty from the... And once you pick that last row, it'll recap the whole entire story for you. If you want to hear it again, this one over here will play it over again. And then if you want one at a random that the story is chosen for you, you push this button here. But you can play this through for many different possibilities and it's just pushing a button. I like this is colorful and it's a really pretty, it's a really pretty toy. And I just think it's a fun introduction to story making because they have the character, the adventure and the ending. So it's like this whole story structure that they're creating as they go along. So if you wanna record your child's name so it calls out, just hold down the side button, then say the name and release the button. When your child makes a story at the beginning, they're gonna hear the story was made by your child's name. So you know I've done videos on story making before in the past and tips to do story starters. And this is just a perfect addition for a child that can't read yet, that might not even be talking yet to really get familiar with language and stories. And of course, you guys already know this about the purple alphabet and me, that I just love a good learning game that has great concepts to reinforce all kinds of learning things. And you're gonna see that in this game, it's called Full Circle. This is Full Circle, it's for ages eight and up. This one you can have two to four players on and it's about words. You guys are gonna like this one, especially for this age range. i show you what it comes with here. The basic premise is that we're gonna spell words using the end of letters of the previous words. So the more letters you use, the more that you can score. And then the more of your opponent's letters you use, the more points you'll get and make them lose. So inside you get this game disc, which is this green piece here. You get four pegs inside here for your four players, or like your little markers for each player. Then we have this storage bag, and inside this storage bag is where all your tiles can be put. And then we have a red word marker, which is this little red piece here, and then of of course we have our instructions. I'm gonna attach my little word marker right here at the bottom. This helps us keep track of where we are. And for our gameplay, all of these tiles, they stay in the little storage bag. Shake up your letter tiles to start play, to mix them all up. And then you're gonna take out 24 and place them into the center of the game disc. Okay, I think I had 24, not sure. If I miscounted, you guys will have to forgive me. So you get to choose which player you're going to be, if you're gonna be the orange, red, yellow, or purple. And it just goes in the first spot. We start by having the youngest player go first since I'm playing against myself. I guess that would be me. I'm rarely the youngest player to go first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these tiles and try to decide on a word that I can spell and I see one and I can place them anywhere I want on our little game disc here. So I'll just start down here. So I count how many I used. One, two, three, four, five. So I get to move my pig five spaces. Then I can pick five more out of my game bag to replace what I used. Five, so we're refreshed for the next play. Now here's where we get interesting. The next player can decide what word they're going to start, but they're gonna start using based upon what letters I already have. And they'll slide the red starter 
over here. So maybe they want to start with the letter E, then it starts here and they do their new word. Let's say I wanted to start with the letter P and E and hopefully I can find a word here and maybe I'm going to spell pen. So now this marks where the start of the second player's new word is. Yellow player can get three tiles. So they move ahead three spaces. I have to move back the same number of spaces used from their words. So she, this person got three, so now I have to move back three. One, two, three. And then we go to the next player and keep on going around like that. So you see what's happening here? Basically, how many letters the next person gets, I have to go back. Now you win by getting all the way to the end of your color path. So I have to move my purple one all the way down here to win. And I have to score 20 points. On the instruction guides, it tells you which letter or which number value are assigned to each letter so you can keep track of your points. And you're probably wondering what happens when you get all the way around the circle when once you start to reach back over to the start you just start taking these letters off and placing them into your bag so you have a new fresh mix of letters. This game is challenging because it really forces your children to look at the letters, develop words, vocabulary they might already use, then they have to look at here and what they can build off of and this is kind of great because it's talking about how our language relates to one another so they can figure out new words based upon the past words endings. I think this is an excellent game especially for teachers or for home and it's a fun family game. If you have a little one, this one is for you. I wanted to put this in my babies and toddler videos and then I wanted to put it in my gifts for music but I'm putting it in this one because it's from Play Monster. It's called Pop Pop Piano. Here is another product from Marari. It's the Pop Pop Piano. I chose this one to be in the holiday gift guide because I really do like the musical aspect of it. I like the colors. I like that there's an objective to it and I like that there are some fine motor skills here, sensory components with touching all these buttons. I'm gonna pull it out of the box for us to take a look at. So what's cool about this one is that there's actually two modes. You can have your classical piano mode and you can have your fun sounds mode. And you you just switch that with this little switch down here at the bottom and you play your piano for the sounds. And let me show you the other mode. So depending on which one you like, you can set that according to according to what you want. I'm gonna flip it right back to the other mode. So you have a couple things going on here. First of all, you can talk about colors, you can talk about the sounds, you can talk about playing music. This toy is for ages 12 months and up. Just pushing these levers is a fine motor oscillation activity, so making sure they get one and they push it appropriately. And then also the, the force that they use to get that little mechanism to pop up becomes really important too. Because if you do it lightly, it just pops right back down. But if you want it to pop over the other side, you gotta hit it a little harder. There we go. And then you have a color matching activity in here. And this is where this will grow with your child. So your 12 month old is probably not even gonna be concerned with the color matching. But maybe you have a three year old who's learning about color matching and you can have them try to get the correct ones and the correct item, and then it becomes a matter of skill. So not only will your child be able to play with this when they're 12 months old, when they get a little bit older, you can ask them to do a little bit more complex things, which is what I like in a toy, you guys. So if you're looking for toys that will last a long time, then consider toys like this, that you can change the purpose of them later. I used to do a whole series about toy upcycling and taking older baby toys and turning them into something new. This is one of those toys. First you have your music, and you have your fine motor, and then you have your force to get them out, and then you can grow to color and color matching, and then getting them into the correct ones. And it's fun and colorful, and this one I really adore. one was really interesting when I first saw it, so I knew you guys would like it. It's called Fuzzykins. All right, when I saw this one, I knew it had to be in the Purple Alphabet gift guide. One, it's adorable. Two, it's just got some really great concepts to it. It's for ages four and up. This is the Fuzzykins Cottontail Cottage. It's a pop-up playhouse. Now there's a lot going on in this one, so bear with me. You're gonna get large Fuzzykins bunny figure. You're gonna get a medium Fuzzykins bunny figure and a small Fuzzykins bunny figure. So there's a pop-up book, and this one has three room scenes in it and some built-in furniture. And then there's also this plastic garden fence and gate. You're gonna get three markers 
stickers, color and stickers, which I like the color and stickers a lot, instruction booklet, and then practice coloring templates. Basically what we're doing is crafting and having an imaginative place. Anytime that you can make something and then play with it, I think that that's an excellent toy because there's some pride in having made it yourself. So here's everything that you get into the kit. Right here is your three room setup. So I'm gonna kind of change my camera angle a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. See how it works like a pop-up book? It's pretty cool. I'm gonna spin it around so you can get an idea of how it just popped right open. And it's fresh out of the box here so it could use a little bit of help just flattening out. And then we have this one here. And then the fence is used to hold it together. It's basically a whole cottage, indoors and outdoors. And I have our fuzzykins, three of them, all different sizes, and our markers. They are also posable with their heads moving. So with the stickers provided, you can color these in and decorate your whole entire house and decide where they're gonna go. So you have a lot of options. There's like a welcome mat on here. There's little banners that you can color and set up and rugs. And so you color these in and place them on your play set. You can decorate your fuzzykins. And get this, once you decorate, you can rinse them off and color them again. So I'm gonna color this one's little ear real quick. Did a really simple job here, but your kids, they're gonna do a lot more than I did. So I wanna give you a quick example. I'm gonna rinse it off and show you. I just did a super quick rinse off, and I mean super quick just for the sake of filming, and it did come off. So I can redecorate it with one of the mar markers here over and over and over again. So not only is there a lot of creativity in this, designing and decorating your house, designing and decorating with your fuzzy kins, there's also the imaginative play component. Children have to do this on their own. They have have to make the animals move, animals talk, animals do whatever it is they do. So when you're playing with your children, it's very important that they have this part in their play because that is what it is. It's an imaginative play. It's not done for them. You can also use these for speech activities, so naming things inside the house, naming parts of the bunny, talking about conversations they have. This is also great because when you're done, it just folds right back up and lays flat and you have your characters and you are good to go. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And when you have this open, you have three sides of play, which means you could have several children working on this at once. So if you have several kids, it won't be a lot of fighting because it's all the way around 360 view. And when you're done, you can just fold it up and it lies flat. So if you need something that is very, very creative, very, very driven by the user, the child, this one is really fun. And I do like that there's extra accessories that you can go along with your sets. So you're still watching, huh? That must mean you wanna know about the giveaway, which I don't blame you, or maybe you just skipped ahead already to hear. Either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Make sure you are subscribed to the Purple Alphabet. We still have more gift guides coming and gift guides from the past, plus videos for the rest of the year. So I'd love to have you here and joining me with all these ideas and inspiration so you can learn through play with your kids. Play Monster is sponsoring today's giveaway, which is for da -da -da -da, the Fuzzy Kins playset Cottontail Cottage. I love the versatility of this. So let me know down below in the comments what you thought was so great about this toy that you would do with your kid. Then head over to the giveaway link to officially enter to win. You must be 18 years of age or older and have a US postal address. I'm gonna be announcing the winner in about a week and you'll have 72 hours to claim your prize. And of course, we always have those bonus entries. There was one hidden in this video. Did you find it? You can enter it when you enter the giveaway. And of course, there's extra bonus entry opportunities throughout social media. And there's one like this one on Facebook. That's one big hint for you. I hope you've been liking these holiday gift guides, make sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up to show your love and good luck.